this Anzac Day, we decided to head to Melbourne City to watch the Anzac Day Parade, followed by lunch. We jumped on to a nearly empty metro train and landed in the city just in time for the Anzac Day Parade. Anzac Day commemorates all Australians and New Zealanders who served and died in wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. War veterans, families of deceased veterans and school children participate in the Anzac Day Parade as a mark of respect to fallen soldiers. The parade also demonstrates the cultural diversity of the city of Melbourne. I went up to war veterans and asked for a photo. 75. <laughs> You're taking a movie. <laughs> Next stop on our itinerary was Fitzroy Gardens. Fitzroy Gardens is one of Melbourne's most historic and beautiful gardens. Originally set aside as a reserve in 1848, the gardens follow a classic Victorian era design.
The conservatory hosts five ornamental horticultural displays throughout the year. Entry is free. Videography is not allowed in the conservatory. On your way out, take a look at Mary Gilbert, the first European woman to live in Melbourne. Sinclair Cottage was built in 1866 for Fitzroy Gardens head gardener, James Sinclair. The miniature Tudor village behind me was built by Edgar Wilson, a pensioner who lived on Hamilton Road in Norwood, London, in appreciation of Melbourne's generosity in sending food to Great Britain during the Second World War. Sculpted by Ola Kohn between 1931 and 1934, the fairy's tree features Australian animals, birds and bush spirits. On your way out, do not forget to pick up some Australian gifts and souvenirs from the Fitzroy Gardens Visitor Centre and Shop. As the sun was setting on the horizon, we came back to our neighbourhood that boasts of the prettiest railway station in Melbourne. Tired, happy and fulfilled. Coming up in the next video, a virtual tour of Captain Cook's Cottage.